Hello, I'm Corey, and welcome to Creating with Scraps. This episode is going to be focused on how I made my slow stitch needle book. And I need to start by saying I'm not a seamstress. I'm not a skilled needle person at all, nor do I know a ton about it. However, I do like to create things with scraps, and this is a project that anybody with a rudimentary knowledge of sewing can do. And it's also very customizable. So the original one that I showed you is this one here. And this was my kind of my first prototype. And it is five by four. And it has a needle book and then a project bag that I, I put with it. And I'll walk you through how to make this. We're not actually going to make it here. I'm just going to step it out for you so that you can make it because I it, it would take too long. And Again, I'm not a seamstress, so I wouldn't be maybe necessarily using the right words or telling you the right things. I just can just tell you how I do it. And it's actually very simple. It's just incredibly time consuming, especially if you're somebody like me who's not super um, used to working with sewing machines. But it is something that just about anybody can do. And the thing that takes, I think, that I found the longest is figuring out what exactly you're going to put in it because this is one of those projects where you must begin with the end in mind whatever you want it to look like at the end you have to decide in the beginning because you're going to build it or put it together but that way and again this one's five by four and then it's got the little project bag to go with it and and I really like that but I also wanted to make one that was a little bit bigger that was kind of all in one and now this one is much bigger than I would normally use but I wanted to show you some of the different things that you could do with this and what you could put into it. I also made a really tiny one that's more, it's empty, but it's more focused on just the needlework part and not necessarily a bag, though you could certainly put one with it, but just the, the little bits that you need to do it. So I thought I'd show you that. And I also have a variety of sizes and these were all based on not necessarily what I had to put inside, but what I had scrap wise and the idea with these is you can take old bits of doily or tablecloth or um, oh that's what I need that um, you know runners the old-fashioned uh, dresser runners and that kind of thing and even if they're damaged or ruined you can use them and cut them to size and this was an old uh, quilt that uh, my mom had made and I've used it for four or five different things now and this one's a four by three so obviously I would just you know put the little insert in here for needles and these are five by four which is the size I made the other one and this one oh gosh I think this one was like it was this was size was based on I had this I guess it was a table scarf or something and I thought it would make a cool cover so that's what I used so the point is you can make this to suit whatever needs you have and whatever kind of a project you want to do. And before I go on into the how to make it, it's kind of important to cover basically what kind of a fabric you're going to use. Now, you can see here that this is just a tablecloth and this is canvas, but I found that canvas comes like everything else in different weights. And they all look essentially the same but they are not, they all have different weights. So here's three different pieces of canvas and I'll kind of move this to the side. Three different pieces. Now this isn't really canvas, it's muslin and it works really great for stitching on because I'm gonna to try to get it close there and hopefully you can see. It's got um, kind of a wider weave so it's easy to um, stitch on. Basically if you're using embroidery floss or or pearlized cotton or whatever you're going to do your slow stitching on this is this is a great surface and it's rather thin and it's not very spendy I want to say this is like $3.99 a yard $4.99 a yard at um, the major retailers but it looks almost the same as this canvas and I got this one at Walmart and it's kind of I don't know I would say maybe a medium weight canvas it's pretty sturdy and pretty strong and it was five ninety nine a yard. I, I kind of made that up, but it was it wasn't super spendy. And then I found at Hobby Lobby um, a really heavy duty weight canvas, and you can when you're got them next to each other, you can feel the difference. And when you look up close, you can see that this is just kind of a bigger, bulkier. And the reason I mention that, and you don't have to use canvas by any means. I just did because that's what I had and what I like. 
And the same thing with the felt. What well, I'm going to come back to felt. But you can also use, you know, like I could use this if I wanted to. This was a piece that I got at a Goodwill outlet that somebody had done crochet on. And I could wrap this around um, a piece of canvas. Or a girlfriend of mine sent me some samplers. And this would make a great size needle book. And it's kind of a tapestry feel. I would just put the linen on the inside, not the linen. Uh, the canvas on the inside and this would make a great great cover uh, ticking is another fabric that works really well any a kind of upholstery fabric and you know the, the excellent tim holtz fabric it's probably too thin by itself but if you were to use this as the cover and then put some of that heavier canvas inside well it makes a really sturdy book so my point is you can pretty much use any fabric you want you just want to make sure that you use something with some heft or weight to it as well. You can see there's just umpteen options. Ticking is an excellent choice. Uh, my husband tore a hole in his jeans and I thought, oh gosh, the rest of it would make a fabulous needle book because it's got a, a nice sturdy weight. And so I'm showing that and sharing that because you really can use what you want. This was something I got at a Goodwill outlet. It's a really pretty hand crocheted doily or not doily handkerchief but the rose is looks like it's kind of a machine thing so what I could do is take another piece and just sew it right over the top of that so I could still use this and put put the canvas behind it and make a great cover but you know just hide the part that I don't want and then some of these you can cut down and make into smaller bits so my whole point with that is you really can use anything you want here's another table runner it looks like this one was destroyed or damaged somehow but I can salvage the edges and just, you know, put that out the edge if I want. So look at things with the possibility of what they can become rather than what they are when you're choosing your fabric and your canvas. Um, again, I encourage something a little bit sturdier because I feel like that gives me more stability when I work with it. But you can put stabilizer and all that kind of stuff in. But again, this isn't designed for necessarily somebody who is a pro sewer. This is designed for anybody who wants to make the project. And that's when I come to the felt. All right, you can go to a craft store and get felt. And if you look at a couple different kinds, you'll notice there's thicker and thinner felt and wool felt. This one's kind of, it says premium, but um, it's not a wool felt. It's just a regular old felt. It's 79 cents a sheet. But if you get the, the really thin ones, it doesn't hold the needles very well. I feel like it's just not tight enough. Wool felt is ideal, but it's a little bit more spendy. Use what you've got, but if you have to buy something, uh, buy something that you're going to be happy with. So these take I think a long time. They take a couple hours minimum each to figure out what you want and what you're going to include and where you're going to put it. And if you're going to spend that time, be happy with your finished product. And I'm not saying go out and spend a fortune because I love re using reclaimed things, but make sure that you are getting the quality of materials that are going to pr produce a result that you're happy with. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Whichever fabric you decide. All right. And then this one is a project book. Now, I used the um, ribbon closure just because I like it and I like the flexibility. Um, one of the samples I started to put together, uh, you put, um, uh, here we go, this one. I had started it to show you and the, the ribbon closure will be tied to it so that you can, once you're done and you're, it's got it full, you can come around this way. So it's a permanent closure as opposed to a um, one that you can remove. And I did this on purpose with this one simply so that I could make it as fat as I wanted to to show you how much you can get in there. But it, it's personal preference. If you don't intend to stuff it that full, you don't need to obviously um, make that kind of a closure. This little itty bitty needle book that I made as a gift, I put this on here and I'm not sure if I'm going to use a snap or Velcro or what. But, you know, you can use, put this on uh, just a leftover bit of fabric on the back and sew it on the back and bring it around to the front for your closure that way. So you have a lot of options. It's just dependent on what you want and what you need. If you're going to add a closure like this, just before you finish sewing the whole thing, you're just gonna to wanna to sew one on. And now if you're going to do um, a layer of fabric over the top, you wanna sandwich this in between. Most of the time what I have done is I took the doily or whatever it is 
and I backed it on a piece of canvas and I didn't put another piece in between it because that provided me with enough stability. Now this one doesn't have the pages in it or the places to hold the needles, but when it does, I will put those two together. So you would see where I would sew this closure. And the ones I'm showing you all have raw or unfinished edges. They're not turned and pressed and pristine because I like raw edges. I like the simplicity and ease and I really like the way it looks. But if that's what you want, if you like the turned pressed edges and the pr precise measurements, you can do that too. It's going to work the same way. You just take the time to iron and fold and, and, and pre-stitch. So, all right, this one here, and I'll come back to these in just a moment and these inserts. This one here is my quote unquote newer one. And I wanted to use this, this table scarf kind of a thing. And I wanted to kind of show you how much you can really get into one of these. And I don't remember what I said. This is uh, 10, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this one's um, just about nine inches, and it's um, maybe it's eight, but five, and about five and a half inches wide. And I just put a little pocket here, and I've got some old bits, and I found this old tatting. And I just, like again, I wouldn't necessarily keep all this in here while I was working, but I wanted to show you how much you can really shove into these books. This little pocket a friend gave me this. It's um, a valance, I guess, a sliding door valance thing. It's kind of like a stiff, crinkly fabric. I used lace in, in this sample, and so you can certainly use lace if you want to. But again, my point is use what you've got. You can make the pocket out of just about anything. And it's got a space for its steam ripper and a ruler, which are, you know, handy when you're doing needlework. And... This side has, I tried to make them a little bit different, but some of the stuff has to be similar. And I'll try to zoom in a little bit, simply because they're slow stitch needlebooks. And the glass top pins. Now I had ordered some from Amazon that says pearl top, but they're not the same thing as the glass top. I just think they're extra pretty, but any pins will work. And buttons and some different kinds of thread or floss and some snaps. I used Velcro on here. I don't know that I would have done that next time, but just to show you this is the difference between these two this one has basically a front and a back cover and these inside pages are basically just two pieces of fabric that have been stitched together so i put the pieces that i want on each piece of fabric and then i'll stitch the tops together and the bottoms together and then if I'm going to put lace inside you know I, I put lace on the edges of the, this one but I didn't on this one so if you choose to add lace and then you sew this down the middle so the idea here is that you build each page before you combine them together and that's how I did this the first book that I showed you but the second book I added an extra page and what I did is the same thing. It's got a front and back cover. They're essentially the same with a pocket and a place for the lace snippets that you can cut off and use in your slow stitch projects. And it's got the same two page system where you take two layers and sew them together here. And then this one added a third piece of fabric. And what I did here, uh, I, here we go. I took another piece of fabric cut to the same, same size and I folded it to make it into a pocket. And then I cut a slitter right in the middle, folded it over and sewed it in. And I'll, I'll when I go over that, I'll show you a little bit more. Um, again, I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail, but I'll show you how I did it. And then that way I was able to make double pockets. And if I were going to you know, wrap this up and take it with me as my slow stitch project, this gives me a lot of flexibility in what I take. So I've got, you know, pretty shoved full pocket here, seam ripper and a ruler here. I've got the pins, buttons, different kinds of thread, some more buttons. And in here, I could put whatever my project was, whatever, you know, fabric I was working on or some uh, muslin. Maybe I was planning to attach a doily, um, use some DMC floss. So I've got a lot of room for whatever project I'm working in in a pocket. And... Uh, then I've got, oh, sorry about that, tripod, got it. Um, I've got a lot of room in the other side for a pocket. Like this one I've got, I shoved in some um, uh, cross-stitch pattern and cross-stitch fabric. And there's some yo-yos and I think there's some hexes in here. Now, 
I don't want anybody thinking I make these yo-yos or hexes. My mom makes them and I permanently borrow them from her. But you can, you know, if you make yo-yos and hexes and these kinds of cool things, you can just, you know, tuck those in your little pocket so you've got them ready for your slow stitch project. And then in between those two pockets, so what I did is I made it the exact same way I made this, except I sewed it together at the end. So if you're a person who likes to use a hoop, I don't. But if you're a person who does, you can put a hoop right there in the center. And this one, this one's pretty bulky. I'd probably put this on the outside. Here I've got it on the inside, but I'd probably put it on the outside. But it is a lighted magnifying glass. How slick is that? It's a little fat. It's probably about an inch or so. But, you know, to thread needles, you can use the thinner ones, of course, but I thought that one was pretty cool. And this is another one of those pens where you can write your trace your pattern, and then when you apply heat, it disappears. And uh, a needle threader, and just a wire coilless pen because they're kind of fun. And this is a little bit different. And this book, I did the, here we go, let me, got it off to the side. Here, I did the scissors with just a little Velcro and ribbon closure because these scissors had a guard at the end. Well, the, this particular pair with one of those storks on them, I'm sure there's a story behind why they're storks, but I don't know what it is. Anyway, I used a snap because this one didn't have a guard and it was kind of pointy and sharp. So I put the snap to hold the scissors in place so that they're not flying out and this is an old needle thing so I attached that here I could put something else in the pocket some bold pins the fancy pin and then the snippet scrap in the back now this one the other one I put on with velcro but this one I had used just one of uh, an off cut of doily that I had sewed it right on the back and sewed it onto a piece of card so that I can cut this off and I can use little bits of lace in in my project. Here again I drilled a hole in the thimble and on this one I happen to have a name tag and just to show you that you can do different things. Here I had put a, a thimble again with a couple little um, wooden bobbins just for decoration and then the thimble obviously is there it is to use it but here I used a thimble and with a name tag so if it got lost you know just to show you that there's you know different things that you can do. If you wanted to, you could, you, I found these really cool old scissors that um, you could put these in. You could put a tape measure in. You could, if you're a crochet person, you could put a crochet hook and some thread in. You, more safety pins, more of those clips that I used the last time. The idea is whatever you use in your slow stitch project, with this kind of a style, you can pretty much include it. So now that I've shown you all of this, let me actually walk you through how I created it. And again, this is just my way of doing it. There's probably a gazillion other ways and different ways and better ways. Mrs. Smith from, um, let's see, Mrs. Mrs. Cogs Crafts, Liz Smith has a slow stitch and I think she offers a course. I haven't taken it, but she offers one and she does a slow stitch uh, or a, a needle book flip through and then Jibineri does several of those but I don't think either of them have a tutorial and again my tutorial is going to be haphazard at best simply because um, I, it takes a long time to do each step so the first thing you do is decide on your piece what are you what are you wanting cover wise size wise like this I thought was an absolutely gorgeous old doily, um, uh, not a doily, what are those things? Table runner, tabletop thing. And actually it may have been something else because you can see the shape is a little bit different. But I thought it was really pretty. And it was a little too small as it was, so I just pinned it on a piece of canvas. And I went in with a sewing machine and sewed on the inside, but now I'll have to go and hand stitch all those little pieces down at the edge. So you start by figuring out what piece you want to begin with and then cutting a piece of canvas to size. Now, I'm not great at cutting straight lines, so I use a rotary cutter and a cutting mat simply because I find it significantly easier and a lot easier to keep it straight. So that's something that I do. So step one is I figure out the size. And then step two 
is I get more of my canvas and I cut the extra pieces that are going to be the inside of my book. And let's, I don't remember what this one is. Just let's say it's 10 by seven or maybe it's 12 by seven, whatever this is. I would cut the same number of pieces that I want for pockets. So I would cut two pieces for the front and back of the needle and scissor and sewing area. So I would cut two of those. And then if I wanted to make the pocket like I did on the larger book, I would cut another piece to the same width, but I would cut it a little bit taller so that I can fold it and fold it to make my pocket. So step two is cut your inside pieces. However many you decide you want, whether it's just the two like in this book or whether it's three or four, um, this one has three, but you could add another pocket if you wanted to, um, though it's going to get pretty chubby. So keep that in mind. So you cut the number of pockets that you want, same exact size. Then I got to tell you, honestly, I find using these by far the easiest because you can sew and sew and sew over this and it doesn't really show that much. For example, the, the big one that I did, the beauty of this is I sewed over this like five or six times. I've got a zigzag stitch and a straight stitch and I've got stitches back here and I did a zigzag stitch to hold my tab on. And it doesn't really show where if you use a standard fabric, if I were just to use this, you would see all of the different stitch lines. So that's something to keep in mind too. If you you know don't want your stitching to show so much, but you're gonna do a lot of stitching, you either have to be very strategic or you choose your, your piece that you're going to cover with carefully. When I do this piece, because canvas unravels so easily, I use a single stitch all the way around to keep it from unraveling a bunch. Now I stitch it a couple times because canvas is notorious for coming unraveled and actually a lot of heavy duty fabrics. Denim probably would be a good one because it doesn't unravel quite as much, but still I go around the whole way. And then again, like with this one, I would come in and hand stitch this piece before, um, before putting the inside in. All right, I cut these, these pieces that I did as a sample. Oh, here we go. Here's another one I was gonna show you. So I really thought this was gorgeous. It's got um, an ugly spot on it, but it's a really old piece of, I don't even know what it is, lace of some sort, but I thought it was really pretty. And it was a little too small for a needlebook. So again, I just tacked it down to a piece of canvas and I'll come in and I'll hand stitch it. And by the time I'm done, it will just make a beautiful cover front and back and then the ugly spots in the back. So I won't even notice it or I could slow stitch something over the top of it. But don't limit yourself to the size of the piece you're using because you can alter it to fit is my purpose with that. All right, so let's just say this is the one I'm building, okay? I have chosen my, my doily or my fabric and I put my canvas on the inside and now I need the pages. And again, I'm cutting two for the main insert, two of the exact same size. And then I put them together separately. So when I build them, I do them like this. And this is the part that takes a long time. I highly encourage you to begin with the end in mind. I know that I have a small pair of scissors that I want to go in this, this spot. And I know I want to put some different kinds of needles and I want to put some bulb pins and maybe I want to put one of these um, coilless pins and I want to hang a couple bobbins and maybe over here I'm going to put some needles and maybe I want to put some charms like this book I didn't put many charms in or any charms in I don't think um, oh yeah here we go I've got one charm here but the other book where would I put that I had charms all along the top so you have to know that before you get started so that you can make sure you've got a place to hang your charms and about how big are they going to be. Well, this is the size bobbin and I want to put a needle threader in there and oh, I want to make sure I include a seam ripper and how big is my seam ripper. So all of that stuff and which is why I'm not getting exact with measurements because what you put in your book will determine how many little places you have for things. 
So on this particular one, I was planning, okay, I want um, some bulb pins. I want some sewing needles. I'm going to probably right here hang my little needle threader. I'm going to use floss or yarn or string or something to hang here. And I'm going to put some straight pins here. And maybe I'll tie some charms along the top. And then I'm going to use my bulb pins or my safety pins and dangle a couple items here. Maybe I'll add some buttons or some snaps or maybe those yo-yos rather than putting them in a pocket. Maybe I'll just pin them right here. So before you sew anything, you kind of play around and plan out all of your pieces. Now, I did it more elaborately than you need to. I can just pin this straight onto the canvas. I don't have to create these little loops for it. It just makes it easier to take things in and out. The felt works really well, the tighter felt, to hold the needles in place. Because the looser the felt or the looser the canvas, like if I just put it in the canvas, I find that the needles fall out pretty easily. So do keep that in mind. So let's say this one's gonna be my simple book and I'm not going to have that centerpiece like I did in the big book, okay? So I've got these all planned out. I've got the pieces sewn where I want them. Now I'm going to lay them back sides together. The good side or the, the usable side facing out on both of them. And then the way I do this, and everybody might be a little bit different, is I sew the top with, with the zigzag stitch, and then I, and I pin them, and I sew the bottom with the zigzag stitch. And then I go and I do each side, just because sometimes fabric buckles funny, and I find that if I try to go all the way around, I get a funky little crevice right here, or a little, um, not crevice, a little crease right here. So I have better luck if I do top, bottom, or bottom top. That part doesn't matter so much. And then I do the sides. And what I'll do is I'll zig, I'll do a straight stitch first, and then I'll zigzag because the canvas is the with the looser weave. I, I just want it to be. I want to be sure that it's not going to come apart, and that it's not going to unravel so much. So maybe it's over stitching, and maybe that's why it takes me so long. But it works. So I've sewn these pieces together, and I'm going to lay them right here. Uh, I didn't trim this off, obviously. So we're going to pretend for the sake of speed that they're sewn together and I'm going to lay them right here in the center of my book. But now I want, um, I didn't cut a piece to size, but now I want that little insert. So I'm going to cut another one. I'm going to, you know, cut this one this size and let's see, I want this to be a pocket. So I'm going to fold this up and we're pretending that I've cut this to here and I'm going to fold this down to make sure that it fits the same way. Okay. And then once I've got this step done, I'll pin it. If I want to fold this over to make sure it doesn't unravel, I'll fold it over and to sew it just like I would with paper. And again, pretending here, it's set, cut down here. So then what I do is I cut right up the middle and I'll take about a quarter of an inch of fabric right out just to where it is at the top. And that gives you the ability to have two flaps on your pockets, okay? So I cut right there. Then I'll turn it around. And you could put the pockets facing each other, of course, but then I'll turn it around. And again, we're pretending it's cut and sewn to the exact right dimension. I will use these little fancy clips and I'll clip this in place and I'll take my disappearing pen and right in the middle, I'll draw a line and I will Go in with my sewing machine and do a couple rows of straight stitches. I'll go back and forth a couple times and I'll sew it right down the middle. And then I'll use my iron and lay it on top to get rid of that stitch. And that is how you make the slow stitch needle book. That's all there is to it. The, the only step that I added to this one is once I had these, once I had these two sewn, okay, so so so. Once they were sewn, I took these pages. I've got my stitching right down here. I took these two that are the pocket and I sewed them together on the bottom and on the side. Sewed them together so that's what created this center pocket so that I could put a large project there. I could put a book. You'll, know, you'll notice on this one, the first one, I had um, a little, you know, because it's a junk journal thing, I had a little junk journal book. Well, realistically, on... Maybe a sampler. I didn't put a sample in this one. 
Maybe I would do a sampler or maybe I would do a big card and put it right down here for some stability because I could use, um, you know, a fairly thick cardstock right there since I don't use an embroidery hoop. So that's the only difference. I sewed, I didn't sew the tops. I made sure this was up, but I sewed outside of this I sewed from the top all the way down and all the way here and that's what made my center pocket and, and that's it that's that's how you make these and again the beauty is you can make them any size you want you can customize it to whatever slow stitch kind of project you're doing and what projects products you like to use and that's it slow stitch needle book if you have any questions I know I didn't show you out in intricate detail simply because it's just not really feasible to do without showing you the whole sewing process and like I said that's extremely time consuming um straight stitch and zigzag stitch that's all I've used in here and you don't have to you could use straight stitch for everything I just like the the versatility and the, the look of using the straight stitch and the zigzag stitch to do oh I know what I forgot to do these back pieces so this one is with velcro Oh, and I just tore the paper off, but that's okay. Well, live and learn. Velcro, not as good of a choice as, because you can see I tore it off. Velcro, not as good of a choice as sticking it in a pocket like the other one. But what I did is I just took scraps of lace so that I could use them in my slow stitching project. And I zigzag stitched right across the top. And, well, even now I could come in here and put a little pocket on the back and tuck this piece into my little pocket. And in fact, that's probably what I'll do since the, the back piece tore off. Just make a little lace pocket right here, or a doily pocket, and tuck that in. And that way this is refillable. You can, you know, add more lace and, lace and bits as you use them up. All right, I really hope that made sense. And again, if you've got any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask, just put the questions down below. I had originally thought, and I bought a whole bunch of stuff to fill needle books because people had told me, yeah, if you're going to sell them, sell them filled rather than selling them naked. But they take so much time to do. Like, great example, I was finishing this one up tonight, and I watched three, well, I didn't watch, I listened to three different Harry Potter movies as, as I was figuring out what goes where and how do I want to put this and what options do I want to include. So they, they're very time consuming. So if I do eventually put some in my Etsy shop to sell, it's going to be a little while. And as much as I love this light, I mean, I really do because it's such a cool thing, a lighted magnifying glass. It is just a little bit bulkier than I would probably include in here. But you can get fairly flat magnifying glasses if, you know, seeing the needle, eye of the needle to put needles in is an issue. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Again, I appreciate your support and I appreciate your kindness. And hopefully one day this week I will have another flip, flap, and fold video for you. Take care and happy creating.